Hello, my name is Alicia and I am here today to help you improve your Portuguese skills. In this video, you're going to learn how to ask questions and how to answer them in Portuguese. We'll start with a short introduction. You will learn in this guide for English speakers how to ask questions in Portuguese when meeting someone new, when asking for help and offering help, when shopping and ordering food, when finding out preferences and opinions, and also when making proposals and invitations. I am out of breath just by saying what you're going to learn now, but really it's a lot of information, but it's very simple. So in very few minutes, you're going to be able to do everything that you see here using simple, but very effective Portuguese phrases, okay? And you will also learn some informal expressions to say, I am kidding and you are crazy. So, don't worry, if you do not speak any Portuguese, you can start with this video. And if you do speak some Portuguese, the information will be helpful, okay? And, well, some expressions, they have the variation of você, and in Portuguese, this is informal, is the form of address that we use if the situation is casual. And o senhor, a senhora. O senhor, a senhora is what we use in Brazil when we are in a formal situation to address a man, o senhor, and a woman, a senhora, okay? And this difference will be indicated with the slash. You will also find some informal expressions with uh, the asterisk indicating that they are informal, okay? And I must stress that we are going to see Brazilian Portuguese here because I come from Brazil and this is the Portuguese that I speak and that I teach. But don't worry, because what you see here, you can use to talk to any native Portuguese speaker, okay? The expressions, they are adapted to Brazilian Portuguese, but any native speaker will be able to understand you if you use them, all right? Well, and the material that you see on the screen, you can download it. And you also have a cheat sheet, exercises with answers, MP3, and other free materials to practice. You'll find that in the links in the video description below. Okay, and now we are set, we can begin our questions in Portuguese with a short introduction so you can understand better how our language works. So, in Portuguese, you want to say o João é o professor. So, John is the teacher. O João é o professor is a statement. But we can turn this statement into a question by doing nothing, just changing our voice. So, o João é professor is a fact that I am stating. But I can turn it into a question by changing my tone of voice. O João é o professor. You see, it's the same words in the same sequence, but my tone is a little different. You see how easy and it works like this, okay? When you write, you must place the question mark at the end, but that's it, all right? Well, if you have this question, o João é o professor? Is John the teacher? Well, it's a very closed question because you can only answer it by saying yes or no. So, in Portuguese, you say sim, yes, não, no. You may also want to answer, no say, I don't know. But that's it. You cannot be more creative when answering this kind of questions. But if you find a question such as, quem é o professor? Who is the teacher? Then you can be creative when answering that, because you have an interrogative here. Quem has the meaning of who. So, you can answer whatever you want, well, as long as it makes sense. Quem é o professor? Open question. And then, you cannot answer that by saying yes or no. It doesn't work this way. It doesn't make any sense with yes or no. You must be a little more specific by saying o João é o professor, for example. All right? So, now that we have seen quem, which is an interrogative, let's see the other interrogatives that we have in the Portuguese language. We are going to start with o que. O que is what, okay? O que, as you see here, 
is the beginning of a question. But que can be all alone in the question, okay? So you can phrase it this way too. Both have the same meaning. What? O que? Que? Okay? And you also have quem. We have already seen this. Who? All right? So quem in Portuguese? Who? You also have como. Como is how. Okay? So how, como. <laughs> There's no more to explain about it, okay? Then to talk about places, you have onde. Onde is what you ask when you ask about the location, okay? Onde. If you ask about the place of origin of someone or something, you use de onde. De onde. From where? And if you ask about the destination, where to, then you're going to ask in Portuguese aonde. Right? So here you are moving somewhere and your destination is aonde. Where to? And you also want to ask about time. So when in Portuguese is quando. And if you want to ask about the price of something, you can ask it very quickly by pointing at the object and asking quanto, just like this, okay? The salesperson will understand that you're asking how much for this object. Quanto. And this is everything that you need. And let's take a closer look at a little bit of grammar so you can better understand how to use new word. In Portuguese you have, well, two uh, categories that are masculine and feminine for many um, aspects of our grammar, such as this word that we're going to see. You have quanto, which is masculine and singular. Quanta is feminine and singular. And in the plural you have quantos, quantas. Because this quanto has the meaning of how much, how many. And this quanto, quanta, quantos, quantas is always referring to a noun. So let's look at the examples. You have dinheiro. Dinheiro is money. Masculino, singular. So if you ask how much money, in Portuguese you ask quanto dinheiro. You see? Masculino, singular. Quanto dinheiro. If you're asking about a battery, then feminino singular. Quanta bateria? You see? Quanta is referring to bateria, so feminino singular. If you are using the plural, then you ask how many boys? Quantos garotos? And you're, you're asking how many girls? Quantas garotas? You see? And this is the way it works. A little bit of grammar just so you understand better the way we think in Portuguese. You may want to ask quanto tempo. So you see here quanto is referring to time. Quanto tempo is how we ask how long. We ask about the duration of time. Quanto tempo? How long? And if you want to ask about the reason why, then you ask por que? If you are using porque just alone, isolated, without it being part of a full sentence. If you are using a full sentence, then you're going to ask porque and then ask whatever you want to know. Okay? And to this is well <laughs> why, okay? Porque, porque you pronounce it the same way, and both have the meaning of why. To react, you will answer with because. Because is porque, written this way, okay? So, if you want to say in Portuguese, why, because, you say porque, porque sim. And this is not a very polite way of answering someone, because if the person wants to know why, well, you need to give this person a real reason, not to say why, because. But you may hear that in Portuguese, so... This phrase, why, because, in Portuguese is porque, porque sim, okay? 
Well, moving forward, just a little bit of grammar, because here you're going to see qual. Qual in English is which, but in Portuguese we have another one for which, which is <laughs> quais. Okay? The difference is just singular and plural, depending on the noun that qual and quais is referring to. So, we are going to say qual fruta, because I am asking you which one of them. So you have fruta, it is singular, and qual is referring to fruta. If you have livros, because you have two piles of books, then you must ask the person, quais livros? The first stack of books or the second one? Quais livros? Okay? Because quais is referring to livros. Livros is plural. Alright? So it works just like this. You do not have to think any more about it. Enough with grammar because we're focusing on the communication. And you may want to ask, what is this? And so you just point at the object and ask, o que é isso? And you are ready. Okay, o que é isso? And the person will say, well, the name of the object. You also may want to ask, what time is it? And in Portuguese, the question is, que horas são? What time is it? Que horas são? And you have, in Portuguese, the question, que dia é hoje? What day is today? You see? Que dia é hoje? With que horas são and que dia é hoje, you can start a conversation with a complete stranger. It's a way of breaking the ice, okay? So, normally the person will answer, well, give you the information that you're looking for. And this is a great way of, well, starting a conversation that, well, <laughs> will get more interesting with time, okay? But the first approach, well, can be very, very, well, silly, like asking, well, telling time, okay? So, here you have the expressions that we have seen. And you can pause the video to take a closer look at them. You have the material that you can download if you want to, well, work with it. And if you want to keep on learning, well, I have many, many interesting things for you. Like, for instance, what questions can you ask to, uh, well, get to know someone new? Conhecer as pessoas, meeting people, meeting new people. Then, if you uh, want to, well, just call someone, anyone, you say, perdão. Uh, well, perdão is when you make a mistake and you want to say, I am sorry, excuse me. But it can also be used to call someone. Okay, so you say, perdão. And the person will turn to you and you tell this person what you want to say. If you are using você, so in Brazil, if you're being informal with the person, you're going to use desculpa, okay, with, which is a little more specific, okay, so here you have, I am sorry, excuse me, pardon me, but when addressing someone that you are uh, addressing by saying você, informal in Brazil. And if you use desculpe, well, you are using o senhor, a senhora as a form of address. So, with desculpe, you are in a formal situation by using o senhor, talking to a man, a senhora, talking to a woman. All right? And this is how you just start off a conversation. That's the way. You do not need to do anything else if you do not want to. Well, you need to say whatever you want from this person, but this is the way to break the ice, okay? Being polite when breaking the ice. Well... You also may want to say to the person, do I know you from somewhere? And if you are using você, then you ask, te conheço de algum lugar? Okay? And, well, you're going to use você because this is a very unoriginal pickup line. It can be used 
as a very general way of starting a conversation, but it's also used as a pickup line, which is not very original. But don't worry, if you're a foreigner, you're speaking Portuguese and you do not have to be very original and come up with the funniest pickup line, okay? You don't have to. You just use this cliché, which will help you start a conversation with someone, okay? It's not offensive in any way. So you ask the person, Te conheço de algum lugar? And this can be flirting, but not necessarily. But normally, yes. You also may want to ask the person the name. So if you're using você, the question will be, Como você se chama? Translating it to English would be, What's your name? But literally, what, we're not saying the same thing. But the idea is you're asking the person's name. And in Portuguese, you phrase it this way. Como você se chama? And to ask what is your name when using o senhor a senhora, then you will say Como o senhor a senhora se chama? Okay? And, well, you see, it's very similar. Actually, the only difference here is the form of address. If you're being informal, you're using você. If you are being formal, you use o senhor to a man, a senhora to a woman. But the verb is the same. Here you have se chama. Okay? So, Brazilian Portuguese is really simple. You do not need to know a lot of grammar to start creating your own sentences. All right? When someone asks your name, you have many ways of saying your name. But a very simple one would be in Portuguese to say Eu me chamo, and then your name. It's the same sentence if you're a man or a woman. Okay, in my case, my name is Alicia. So I say, eu me chamo Alicia. And you are done. But well, you may want to be polite and say, muito prazer. Okay, so nice to meet you. Muito prazer. And then you have the question, what do you do for a living? If you're using você, the question will be O que você faz da vida? O que você faz da vida? This is a very informal way of asking the person job title of or profession, okay? So it's very familiar, but it's not impolite. If you're using the formal uh, form of address in Brazilian Portuguese, then the question will be O que o senhor a senhora faz profissionalmente. So it's longer and a little more awkward, okay? But it's the correct way of phrasing it. What do you do for a living? What do you do professionally, okay? And, well, that's the question. You may answer the simple way by just saying eu sou, and then your job title. If you're a woman, the same thing, okay? So in my case, Eu sou professora. Okay, so I am a teacher. Then you have the question Você já esteve no Brasil? And this is a great question to start a conversation. Have you ever been to Brazil? Because everybody loves talking about travel. Everybody, almost everybody likes traveling. So talking about your experience is a great way of relating to someone. So you ask, Você já esteve no Brasil? And if you want to replace Brazil with your country of origin, you can, of course, of course you can. But uh, the grammar will be a little different, okay? No Brasil, we have no because Brazil is masculine. If it's a country that is feminine, like Italia, then you say na Italia. If you are from Italy, you say that. Você já esteve na Itália, for instance, okay? So, this is a great way of breaking the ice, of asking a personal question that's not too personal. Você já esteve no Brasil? And if you're using the formal form of address, then the question is very similar. O senhor, a senhora já esteve no Brasil? You see? And, well, proceeding, you're going to say, yes, I 
have been and then you name the place in Brazil where you were. Sim, eu estive em Salvador. Yes, I have been to Salvador, for instance. Or, não, ainda não. No, not yet. Okay? Well, to keep on asking things, you ask, Você é daqui? Are you from here? Or, formally, you ask, O senhor, a senhora, é daqui? The same thing. Are you from here? And you answer, sim or no. So, G, and then you name your hometown. Okay? So, you say, no, so, G, Salvador. Okay? And with G, you name the city and the grammar is perfect the way it is. Okay? There are a couple of exceptions, but G, you can combine with almost any city in the world. Almost any. Okay? Então, eu sou G, and then your hometown. Well, more questions. Well, you can ask a man informally, Você é novo por aqui? And you can ask a woman informally, Você é nova por aqui? And the meaning is, are you new here? So, it's also a very cliché way of asking someone, trying to flirt with someone. But, well, <laughs> you may do that, okay? It's not forbidden, it's not offensive. You can do that. So, you ask this question. And if the situation is formal, well, you may ask the same thing. O senhor é novo por aqui? When addressing a man. A senhora é nova por aqui? When addressing a woman. But um, this is a, a kind of a pickup line, so you won't use that if you use o senhor a senhora, which are very formal, okay? So it's more common to use when you're using você, this kind of phrase here, all right? It cannot be interpreted, it can be interpreted as flirting, but not necessarily. It can be and normally it will be, all right? Well, after so much flirting, <laughs> it's exhausting to flirt, you keep on flirting because there's another, well, cliche way of trying to make conversation with someone. You ask, você vem sempre aqui? Do you come here often? Well, of course, normally it's interpreted as flirting, not very originally, but it works, okay? So if you're a foreigner, you don't have to, well, use the most fancy Portuguese in the world to start approaching someone, okay? You can use these lines and they work just fine. Você vem sempre aqui? And if you're using o senhor a senhora, not so common when flirting, but the phrase will be o senhor a senhora vem sempre aqui. Okay, do you come here often? And then you have not flirting anymore, I'm tired of flirting. You are going to ask, do you speak English? All right, so você fala inglês in an informal situation. If the situation is formal, you change it to O senhor, a senhora, fala inglês. And quite simple. The person will ask yes or no because, as you see, these questions, they must be answered this way. Sim, no. And you are done. But you may want to ask a more interesting question such as Você fala português? Okay, because, well, then you can speak in Portuguese with this person, all right? So, the same thing if you're asking, O senhor, a senhora fala português? You answer with yes or no, but, well, here you can start talking about your experience, why you're learning Portuguese, uh, have you ever been to Brazil, and so on, okay? So, you can start a conversation with, Você fala português? And you also may want to ask why is this person, well, learning Portuguese. Estudar in Portuguese is to learn or to study. And as you remember, porque is the way to ask about the reasons. Por que você estuda Portuguese? This is the same way as asking 
Why do you study Portuguese? Just like this. And if you're using the formal uh, form of address, you'll change it to Por que o senhor, a senhora, estuda português? Okay, so not very big difference here. The grammar is the same, but the form of address changes, as we have seen many times in this video already. Okay, so you're asking about the reason, por que? And to answer, you answer with why, because, all right? So you say, eu estudo português, por que? And you must tell a reason. I study Portuguese because, for example, you say, estudo português porque é interessante. It's a great reason. I study Portuguese because it's interesting and it really is. Pay attention that here I wrote eu estudo and here I just, well, forgot the eu. I didn't forget it. I just choose not to write it because it's not necessary. Eu, as the pronoun I in English, eu in Portuguese, you do not have to say that. You can but it's not necessary. So you can just omit it and the sentence will make complete sense without this eu as a pronoun. Okay, so if you do not see it written, don't worry, it's not necessary. You can, well, state eu, but you do not have to. And here you have all the phrases that we learned in this past minutes. And, well, we are trying to solve some problems here. So we are going to talk about problems. You can ask any problem by just saying in Portuguese problemas and you do not need much more than that. If you want to stick to the essentials, then you say problemas. And, well, you can ask someone como você está se sentindo? If you are in an informal situation. If you switch to a formal situation, you will say Como o senhor, a senhora, está se sentindo? And this question, it's really nice because you can ask how are you doing the most simple way by asking como vai? Como vai is short and sweet and it's polite. You can use that. But if you want to engage in a more personal conversation, instead of asking como vai, which is very neutral, you can ask how the person is feeling. And this is the phrase that you're going to use. Como você está se sentindo? How are you feeling? And then uh, you're showing that you care about the person. Okay, so it's the first step to have a more intimate conversation. Okay, not necessarily, but it's a very polite way of showing that you care about this person. Okay, so I recommend you to ask that instead of como vai. Como vai is short and it's, it works, it's polite. But to have a more, mm, a deeper conversation, you can start by asking this. All right? You may also want to ask, is everything all right? In Portuguese, you say, está tudo certo? Está tudo certo? And you may also ask, is there something wrong? Tem alguma coisa errada? Tem alguma coisa errada? Also possible is to ask, what is the problem? Qual é o problema? Qual é o problema? And you also may want to ask, posso fazer uma pergunta? May I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Another way of phrasing it is by saying Posso perguntar uma coisinha? Well, in Portuguese, we loved to use this ending inho, inha for many, many words. And it's a way of, well, being more polite or more affectionate. Okay, so if you want to be really, uh, well, polite when asking something to someone, you can say, posso perguntar uma coisa, it's all right. But to go that extra mile and be more polite, you turn coisa, thing, into coisinha, little thing. 
and this is the way you can be a little more uh, friendly okay to the person so you say posso perguntar uma coisinha can i ask you a tiny thing and the person will say of course you can if you ask this way i answer anything that you want okay you can also say instead of pergunta perguntinha a little question you can okay if you want do that and uh, you also may want to say can you help me and another very polite way of asking that is by saying pode me dar uma mãozinha okay uma mão is a hand so can you help me can you give me a helping hand so a tiny hand is a mãozinha so pode me dar uma mãozinha and the person will be well willing to help you then you can ask precisa de ajuda do you need help and you see here it's the verb alone precisa you do not need to add você o senhor a senhora if you do not want to okay so the question is shorter and it works in all situations if you are using uh, você informal or if you're using the formal way of address okay so it doesn't matter precisa de ajuda works in any situation all right then you also have posso ajudar this is the way you offer help in portuguese posso ajudar we have already seen posso and we're going to talk about it a little bit more but you see here you are offering help and these are the phrases that we have seen and in this part of the video you're going to re learn really useful phrases so you can go shopping in portuguese and also ordering food so anything that requires spending money you have it in well some minutes okay so you're really going to learn useful things so you do not starve when traveling to a portuguese speaking country and even making good shopping if you want to so in portuguese you may hear the person offering something let's take for example a coffee by saying você quer um café do you want a coffee this is okay it's polite you're offering something of course it's polite but there are other ways of phrasing it we're going to see in a little uh, short time okay don't be impatient so você quer um café you can offer this way if you're using você if the situation is formal the question will be o senhor a senhora quer um café and you can say that do not worry it's all right but if you want to phrase it a little more politely you will change it and you'll say você queria um café if you're using você and if the situation is formal you switch to o senhor a senhora queria um café so you're doing the same thing you're offering a coffee but queria sounds more polite than just quer okay so you can use both of them but if you're going that extra mile of being more polite then use this better and if you want to be really polite then you say você gostaria de um café would you like a coffee and if the situation is formal you say o senhor a senhora gostaria de um café the same thing but very very polite all right so you use whatever you like best but this expression is really really nice and friendly and the reaction will be yes please sim por favor no thanks no and then you say obrigado to thank if you are a man and obrigada to thank if you are a woman okay and well uh, in your culture it is possible that uh, well you need to say thank you and please because without these words your speech may sound a little rude it may be in some languages in the world it happens but in brazilian portuguese 
we do not need to say por favor, obrigado, okay? Uh, it's included in our speech. So this is why we uh, are not being unpolite if we do not state these expressions, por favor, obrigado, okay? So it doesn't sound rude if you just say sim or no. It's all right. It could be more polite. Yes, it could by adding por favor, obrigado. But don't find it strange if you go to Brazil and you think that people, well, they do not use por favor e obrigado so often. Maybe in your language you use it more often than Brazilians do and when they speak in Portuguese. But this is a very cultural thing. For us, it doesn't mean that we are not being polite. It doesn't mean that we are really being, well, straight to the point, okay? So these words, they do not add any information. They only add politeness. So we just include them when we speak, okay? So it's included in the scene. The por favor is already in there. It's not said literally, but it's included, okay? So don't find it strange if people in Brazil don't use por favor and obrigado so often. It's normal, okay? It's not uh, rudeness or anything like that, all right? So, let's see. If you want to say, yes, I need help because I am looking for something, let's say a book, then you say, sim, estou procurando um livro. And if you want to say, yes, I need a book, then you say, sim, preciso de um livro, okay? So, quite simple. Then you may want to say, no, thank you, I am just browsing. So you will say, não, obrigado, não, obrigada, depending on your gender. And you add, só estou dando uma olhadinha. I'm just taking a look. This is what you say in Portuguese. But you see here, olhadinha is also more polite. Okay, so this is the way we would phrase it normally in Portuguese. Then you can ask for help by saying, Pode me ajudar? Pode me ajudar? Can you help me? And if you're using você, you ask for something by saying, Você tem, for instance, um livro? Do you have a book? And if the situation is formal, o senhor, a senhora tem um livro? Do you have a book? And here you're going to see posso. Posso, we have seen it many times already. And the meaning of posso is, well, can I? And also may I, if you're using it as a question. So it's very polite, you're asking for permission. And in English, you have two ways of asking that, okay? You can ask, can I or may I? May I is more polite, can I, you're asking if it's possible, okay? But in Portuguese, just this word here, posso, and then the, you ask whatever you want to do. For example, you want to pay at a restaurant, so you say, posso pagar? Can I pay? May I pay? And then, well, you pay, <laughs> of course, you need to pay. So, posso pagar? Can I pay? And, well, you can also ask for something by saying, pode me dar? So, this is the way we say in Portuguese, can I have, okay, can you give me um livro? Pode me dar um livro? Can you give me a book? Can I have a book? And you can say that with anything that you want, okay? Anything, food, uh, objects, whatever, all right? Then you have, você se importaria? And this is a very, very polite phrase, which is a little long, which is why we do not use it so often. It sounds beautifully, but it's a little work to say that. So, we do not tend to use it so often, but you can if you want. The phrase here is, would you mind? So, in Portuguese, you say, você se importaria? And then you say whatever you want from the person. And you will switch to, 
o senhor a senhora se importaria if the situation is formal. All right, but as I told you, this is not very common because it's too long, but it's very, very friendly. And then you're going to ask if the person knows something. And in Portuguese, when using você, the question will be você sabe? And do you know? And if the situation is formal, o senhor, a senhora sabe? Okay, the same thing. Do you know? And then you will answer with sim. Eu sei. Yes, I know. Não. Não sei. Okay? Eu sei means I know. But I know when you know something theoretically. Okay? So, for instance, you know philosophy, you know math, that kind of thing. Not, uh, it's not used when you talk about experiences, like knowing someone, okay, or having a particular skill like cooking or riding a bike. You can, but it's not very common, okay? So you use eu sei when it's something that's theoretical that you know, okay? So eu sei. And you have another way of saying do you know in Portuguese. Você conhece? And here you're talking about an experience, okay? So something that you know by experience. For instance, if you know someone. So if I ask you, do you know John? In Portuguese, I will ask, você conhece o João? And I will say o João when we, we are referring to him. O João. If it were a woman, then I would say, você conhece a Maria? Okay, so it's a little different. But here is, well, do you know, have you met this person? Você conhece? And formally you say, o senhor, a senhora conhece? And, well, it's the same thing, okay? And then, sim, eu conheço. Não, eu não conheço. So, if you talk about a person, you will use eu conheço. I know this person. And also, if you're talking about a, an experience. Okay, so a, a very practical thing. Okay? And, well, uh, you may want to ask quanto custa? We have already seen quanto. You point at the object and ask quanto. But if you want to be, well, more expressive, you ask quanto custa? And then you are finding out the price of a product. And you may also want to ask mais alguma coisa if you are working at a store or at a cafe. So you ask mais alguma coisa to find out if the person wants something else. So mais alguma coisa, anything else, something else. Okay, so to finish this purchase. All right. And also important is for you as a client to ask, can I pay by card? And you see once again, posso, okay? So to ask for, or if, if you can do, if it's possible. So you will say, posso pagar com cartão? And if you ask, can I pay in cash? Then you say, posso pagar em dinheiro? Dinheiro is money, but also cash, cash. Okay, so, posso pagar em dinheiro? And you ask, eu queria pagar. Okay, so if you want to pay, you just raise your hand at the cafe and say, eu queria pagar. Or you go to the salesperson at the store and say, eu queria pagar. So, I would like to pay. Is a polite way of phrasing that. So, when with eu queria pagar, you are good to go, all right? And here you have all these beautiful phrases that we have seen. And with four phrases, you'll be able to get to any place that you want, okay? Really, four phrases, okay? So you can find uh, your way around town. So, na cidade, in the city, you're going to ask. Tem um, uma... Por aqui, 
let's say that you want to find a hotel. It doesn't matter what hotel, any hotel will do. One star, five star, it doesn't matter. So you're going to ask about um hotel. So you're going to ask someone, tem um hotel por aqui? Is there a hotel nearby around here? You see? And instead of hotel, you're looking for a library. So you will ask, tem uma biblioteca por aqui? So you see, um, when the place that you're searching for is masculine and uma if it's feminine noun. The only grammar that you need to take into account. And then, if you already know that you are looking for a very specific place that you know that exists, but you don't know where it's located, then your sentence will be a little different. You will ask, Onde fica o hotel? And, well, you may say the name of the hotel because cities have more than one hotel. So, let's take, for example, this hotel is called Hotel Central. So, you ask, Onde fica o hotel central? Because here you're being very specific. O is the. It's not any hotel anymore. It's the hotel. So, you ask that. And if the city only has one library, then you ask, Onde fica a biblioteca? And the person will give you the information that you need. You see? If you're walking or driving and you want to get to some place, then you're going to ask, Como eu vou para? And then you name the place. Como eu vou para o hotel central? Como eu vou para a biblioteca? And it's really so simple. And don't worry, because the person will react by gesturing a lot. So you're going to understand what the person is telling you, because, well, with your hands, you'll be understanding the meaning of the words that the person is saying. All right? And you may ask a taxi driver, Pode me levar para? And then you name the place. Can you drive me? Can you take me to... Um, pode me levar para a biblioteca? And that's it. You see, four phrases and everything that you need to know to talk very simply about places, but you see, very complete. And now, let's talk about our likes and dislikes and even offering our opinion on a topic. So, we are going to see... Você gosta de... And here I am going to ask whatever I want to know. For instance, books. So, one book. I'm going to say, você gosta do livro? Because, well, it's only one book. Okay, I can say that. Okay? And if I'm talking about several books, I ask, você gosta de livros? It's very general. Okay? So, you can ask that. Instead of livro, let's take coffee. Você gosta de café? Do you like coffee? Okay? And, well, if I am very, well, gourmet for coffees, I may ask if you like Brazilian coffees. Okay? So, I ask, do you like Brazilian coffees? Você gosta de cafés brasileiros? Because there are several kinds. I have no idea. I'm not an expert. But you may ask that. Okay? But... You see, it's quite simple. You just ask, você gosta de? And then, whatever you want to know. If you're using você. If you're using o senhor, a senhora, the same thing. O senhor, a senhora, gosta de? And then, you name whatever you want to know. O senhor, a senhora, gosta de? If it's singular or plural, it doesn't matter, okay? The verb will be the same, okay? Liking, in Portuguese, is gostar. Well, you will react by saying, yes, I like. Sim, eu gosto. Or, no, I don't like. Não, eu não gosto. And this is everything that you need to know. You see how simple. Eu gosto, eu não gosto. Você gosta, você não gosta. Okay? Another way of asking is, do que você gosta mais? 
So here you're offering at least two options and you're asking the person what do you like better? Do que você gosta mais? And if you are being formal, then you will ask Do que o senhor, a senhora gosta mais? The same question. What do you like better? To answer, you just say Eu gosto mais de And your option Eu gosto mais de And that's everything. So you see, it's really easy to talk about things that you like in Portuguese. If you're using você, you can also ask what do you prefer? O que você prefere? O que você prefere? And if you're using o senhor a senhora, o que o senhor a senhora prefere? Okay, so the answer will be eu prefiro. And then you say whatever you like best. Simple, right? You can ask someone's opinion by asking Qual é a sua opinião? Okay? And the way of answering that is Eu penso que I think that For example, if my opinion is that Portuguese is interesting as we saw earlier I would say Eu penso que o português é interessante and this is everything. You see? And another way of asking the opinion in Portuguese is using this verb, okay? Achar. O que você acha? It's another way of asking what do you think? What is your opinion? And you switch a little bit to the formal way of asking that. O que o senhor, a senhora acha? And you react by saying, acho que, I think that, eu acho que o português é interessante. I think that Portuguese is interesting. And that's it. So here you have all these phrases to talk about likes and opinions. And we're going to learn how to propose and how to invite someone to do something. So let's begin with... Podemos conversar? Can we talk? So, it's short and simple. Podemos conversar? Can we talk? You will use você when asking Você tem tempo para? And then, for example, have you, Do you have time for a coffee? Você tem tempo para um café? If the situation is formal, then instead of você, you know, you use o senhor, a senhora. But you may use você. As I told you, in Brazil, we tend to use normally você. Você tem tempo para um café? And, well, still using você. Quer beber alguma coisa? But instead of você, you can use the formal form of address. Of course, you can. But to offer, do you want to have a drink? Then you ask. Quer beber alguma coisa? And you can ask, do you want to do something together? Vamos fazer alguma coisa? Vamos fazer alguma coisa? And here you have você. And if I want to ask, do you come with me? Do you want to come with me? Você vem comigo? And formally, the question will be O senhor, a senhora, vem comigo? If you are using você, you can formulate it this way. Você me acompanha? Do you join me? O senhor, a senhora, me acompanha? And you can also ask Você topa? Você topa is very familiar Brazilian, okay? So, better with você. Você topa is a way of asking, are you in? So, do you want to do something with me? So, você topa. And you can also invite someone to go out. And you say, posso te convidar? 
para sair. Can I ask you to go out? This is what you are saying literally. So you are with someone, some place, and you want to go out of there. So you ask this. Posso te convidar para sair? But of course, as we do in English, normally this phrase will be interpreted as do you want to go out with me on a date, a romantic rendezvous, okay? So when you ask someone this, normally it will be interpreted as well, you're inviting someone out to have a romantic evening. So you ask, posso te convidar para sair? And if you want to, well, invite a person to have a meal together, you ask, posso te convidar para almoçar fora? Or if instead of having lunch, almoçar, you want to have dinner together, you say, para jantar fora. And this is literally, can I buy you a meal? But it can be interpreted as you're offering a romantic dinner or lunch date. Okay, so this is the way you propose it to someone. Here are the phrases that we saw. And we're going to finish this video with some informal expressions that are very useful. We will start with kidding because, well, as you know, Brazilians, we are very informal and we like to, well, be kidding, okay? We kid a lot. So we're just going to see what expressions reveal that we are joking. Estou brincando. Okay, I'm just kidding. Estou de brincadeira. The same thing, I'm joking. Estou zoando. This is informal. So you see here the asterisk is telling us this is more informal Brazilian. Or estou de zoeira. The same thing. I'm just kidding. Estou te tirando. Okay, I'm just messing with you. Or even estou tirando onda com a sua cara. Okay, or estou tirando onda is already sufficient. Okay, I'm just, well, messing with you. And if you want to say, what the hell, in Portuguese, you say, o que que é isso? It's a way of phrasing that. What the hell? O que é isso? Ou, o que que é isso? O que é isso? We have already seen. What is this? But if you're referring to a general situation, you want to know what the hell is happening, you say in Brazil, o que que é isso? Okay? And here are the phrases. And if you want to say you are crazy in Portuguese, you have many ways of doing that. Of course, mental health is not a, a topic to be taken lightly, but these expressions that I'm going to show you, they are very used in Portuguese and you need to know the meaning of them in order to understand people better. Some of them are not literal, so it's important for you to, well, understand the subtleties of Brazilian Portuguese in order to better communicate with the natives. So, do not feel obliged to use these expressions, but you should understand their meaning. So, let's begin with essa ideia é louca. This idea is crazy. Você me deixa louco. You say that if you are a man. Você me deixa louca. You say that if you are a woman. With this beautiful phrase, you are saying you are driving me crazy. And it can be negative, so I'm getting mad, you're driving me crazy. But it can also be said um, in uh, a meaning that the person is driving you crazy because you're very head over heels in love with this person. Você me deixa louca, okay? So it's, wow, you drive me insane because I love you so much that I'm feeling, wow, well, lightheaded, okay? So it's kind of the meaning that it has. Of course, the tone of voice of the person will reveal you if the person is angry or in love, okay? So, well, the tone of voice says a lot. And then you have the phrase, que loucura, this is crazy. Or, que doideira, the same thing, this is crazy. Que maluquice, this is crazy. And you can say, you are crazy, você é maluco, to a man, você é maluca, to a woman. Você é doido, to a man. Você é doida, to a woman. And you have, você está pirado, você está pirada. The same thing, you are crazy, but this is informal. And, você está viajando. 
okay? Uh, the meaning of this phrase is you are traveling, so you are tripping, okay? So you're not in this real world. Your, your mind is somewhere else, okay? So you're tripping. Você está viajando. Você está tanta. This is a very funny expression. People do not say that anymore. It's kind of old-fashioned, but it's really funny and sweet to say, okay? It, it can be offensive, but the, the word is so sweet that, well, it doesn't sound offensive, okay? So you say, você está tanta, okay? You're crazy. And also, biruta. Biruta sounds so sweet, so <laughs> it's offensive, but it doesn't sound like, well, an offense. So you say, você está biruta. Okay, it's also old-fashioned. And you say, você pirou. You lost your mind. Você pirou. And you also may want to say, você endoideceu. You went crazy. Você despirocou. And this is very, very, very informal. So be careful with this expression. Okay? Você despirocou. You went crazy. And you can say, você está com um parafuso solto. Parafuso is this object, okay? So, if you say that someone has a, uh, a loose screw, it means that the person isn't working properly, okay? Something is not working <laughs> right in the head, okay? So, it's a kind of a metaphor. It's already in other languages, but in English, I think you don't say that, okay? So, uh, this is the way we say it in Portuguese, and it's informal. And you can also say, Você é doido varrido. To a man, você é doida varrida. To a woman. So you're really crazy. It's very strong. And in very informal Brazilian, more like slang, you will hear a man talking to another man and saying, Cê é doido, maluco. And this is, you are crazy, crazy person. <laughs> this is the way people talk. Maluco is a crazy person, but it's also a term of endearment between uh, young men, okay? So instead of calling the other guy brother, bro, they use maluco in Brazil. So it's like your friend, but what the word is crazy, okay? So are you crazy person, okay? So that's the way you phrase it in slang Brazilian, all right? Well, so these are the expressions in order for you to understand better what are we saying in Brazil. And we finish this with the exercises that you have in the material. You can download it and practice all this new information that I am sure it was really helpful because all these expressions, you are going to use them in your daily life when speaking in Brazilian Portuguese. So if you like the video, like it. If you want to subscribe to the channel, do it because you're going to learn a lot of useful Brazilian Portuguese. So thank you very much. Obrigada e tchau.